to one more session of your GOC chapter. So in the previous video, what have we seen? We have seen what is meant by geometrical isomerism. In that, I've also taught you, I mean, I've given you an index based on optical isomerism. I said I'll be dealing with different, different topics in that, right? So let us start off with optical isomerism today. Fine. So when I have to speak about geometrical isomerism, let's start first and start comparing with optical isomerism. So basically in geometrical isomerism, what do we see? We have seen the difference in arrangement of atoms around a double bond, correct? There we have got cis and trans isomerism, right? Or cis and trans isomers. Fine. Cis means on the same side, trans means on the opposite side, correct? Now, so let's say. So in, when I speak about geometrical isomers, the first important thing what should you remember, you have to remember that in geometrical uh, isomers, there are different physical properties like first, first important thing, remember they have different physical properties. So what are the different physical properties, right? The cisin trans isomer, they differ in melting point, then they differ in boiling point. Then one more physical property like density, they differ in that, right? Fine. So, but uh, when it comes to uh, chemical properties, they have same chemical properties. Remember, same chemical properties. That. But now same thing if I am comparing with optical isomers. Now my concept is optical isomerism. So I am talking about optical isomers in this case. So basically when I take optical isomers, important thing to remember, they are going to have same physical properties as well as same chemical properties. This is what is the important thing we have to remember, same chemical properties. Now, so now let us, uh, with this basic idea, let's start discussing what actually is optical isomerism or wh why are we calling or what why are we taking that concept of optical activity. Optical means light, isn't it? Right. So now, <coughs> if I have to start explaining, simple words, when your teacher is asking, what is optical activity? First, let us write the definition and then go to the concept. So suppose if your teacher is asking, define optical activity. Now, right. You have to write this symbol only just in four, uh, four or five words. That is, it is action on or action of light or action on okay, plain polarized light. Action on plain polarized light. Okay, what is this word means? Let's see now. Right. Suppose if I take an ordinary light. Okay. Now ordinary or the ordinary light. So ordinary light, how do we represent ordinary light? Let us write that, draw, yeah, this is your, this is an ordinary light, it, uh, it, 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 it propagates in all directions, isn't it, right, all directions, done. So when this ordinary light is sent through a Nicole prism, okay, I am sending this to a Nicole prism, let us draw one Nicole prism. So this is your Nicole prism, then what happens? all these rays you know they get cut off and you get a light in one plane this is which plane one plane this direction this is one plane okay yes so this plane is called plane polarized waves okay this is called plane polarized waves done so what happens here in this case the vibrations occur in all planes at you know in this plane this plane this plane at right angles to the line of propagation fine in this case but when as soon as you send it through nicole prism this nicole prism the remaining thing gets cut off and the uh, only one frequency light that is plane polarized light in one plane only you get right and this plane polarized light suppose if it, it, it rotates the um, light whatever you are uh, sending either to right or left that means it will rotate the light in this direction towards right in this way correct yes or it can also rotate the light in this direction this is your left right so it can rotate the light in the right direction as I have written it can rotate the light to left direction also done yes fine so now this particular rotation whatever is there we are going to you know, this whole activity is called optical activity that rotating the plane polarized light 
<coughs> either towards the right or towards the left is called optical activity that's the concept right now this particular optical activity is explained or this particular rotation is explained by typical word or a specific word that is called specific rotation specific rotation this specific rotation is denoted by alpha not <coughs> which is equal to alpha observed by l into c now we will write all this is called alpha is called specific rotation done yes now what is this alpha this alpha observed is called observed angle of rotation observed angle of rotation we calculate with using this formula specific rotation which is different for different different molecules now what is this l this l is called length of solution length of solution in decimeter this is also done now what is this c c is called concentration of active compound in gram per liter in gram per liter done right now important thing now you 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 whichever along with this data you calculate the specific rotation for different different molecules suppose if the rotation whatever specific rotation if it rotates the plane polarized towards left okay let us write if the particular molecule if the rotation rotation is rotation of plane polarized light i'm writing this ppl is towards left if it is rotating towards left in this direction okay in this direction is towards left then we call that form as levo form and it is denoted by l l form and because it is towards the left we denote by a minus symbol suppose if the rotation of plane polarized light is towards right right then i call this as dextro form dextro form we denote by d form and the symbol is plus towards the side right fine so this important concept with this important concept now we'll gradually go into uh, or we'll start writing the meaning of optical isomer all right fine so let us take out this concept and start with one more so basically whenever i say optical isomer important thing first so okay i have learned what is optical activity then i have learned what is specific rotation now i'll speak about a term called optical isomer that first important thing for a molecule to be optically active or optical isomer important first in the important thing is there should be presence of chiral carbon but never ensure it is optical even if it is presence of chiral carbon never ensure it is optically active that important thing you should remember if it has chiral carbon doesn't mean it will be optically active but i'm writing that but also but never ensure molecule is optically active this is one of the condition but with that only i can't decide optically active okay that what is important thing next what is a chiral center now i say what is a chiral center let us write that chiral center is basically have a carbon or carbon i'll draw in with an example you understand having or attached or attached to four different groups four different groups okay now let us write an example you will understand what it is suppose if i have a carbon here i have said four different groups so here i have bromine here i have chlorine here i have fluorine atom here i have iodine atom isn't it four different uh, types of uh, atoms of uh, groups of atoms done fine 
Suppose if the same thing, now this carbon is called chiral carbon, as I said, chiral center or chiral carbon, which has four different groups. So this chiral carbon, same thing, if I'm trying to draw the mirror image of this, I'm trying to draw the mirror image. Exactly, this is the mirror image of this, means this Cl comes here, this iodine comes the other way, bromine comes on the top, fluorine on the down. So let us write that. Bromine this mirror image cl this iodine on the other side iodine we have fluorine done yes so first important thing is here these two are called optical isomers okay what are you observing suppose if i take this isomer and right if i take this isomer and if i take this isomer if i try to superimpose it can you get that means what do you get here i have like this now here i'm taking this chlorine here i'm taking this chlorine i'm superimposing it they can't be superimposed isn't it right so optical isomers are non-superimposable or they show non-superimposable or they are non-superimposable mirror images non superimposable mirror images next important thing they have or they they possess a chiral or asymmetric carbon these are the conditions for asymmetric carbon or asymmetric carbon so with this particular thing i can say any molecule if it is opt means if somebody says how can you prove that it is optically active you have to remember it is non superimposable on its mirror image it is non superimposable on its mirror image first thing and next important okay chiral uh, it has chiral in center asymmetric center next important does not contain does not contain any elements of symmetry any elements of symmetry okay now what is this elements of symmetry we will see done now i have got a basic idea it has a chiral center done it should be non superimposable on its mirror image that also done then i said it does not contain any elements of symmetry i said so first of all we have seen how does it rotate then we have seen what is specific rotation then i have seen i said gradually i have taken you into the concept now we'll see what is meant by elements of symmetry let us write so basically elements of symmetry when i have to write the heading i said it does not contain isn't it so what are these elements of symmetry elements of symmetry basically is it means uh, it, it offers means uh, this particular thing offers a simple device device it is a simple device how it's going to decide whether the molecule is chiral or achiral okay right so whether the molecule is superimposable or non superimposable in smithage whether the molecule lacks all elements of symmetry uh, it is chiral means it's going to decide that conditions what what this elements of symmetry is going to explain or decide whether the molecule is let us write whether the molecule is chiral or a chiral this is one condition second it's going to say whether the molecule is superimposable superimposable or non superimposable superimposable or non superimposable on its mirror image on its mirror image this is what it says right this is what it explains us right now let's see plane of symmetry the first one so in elements of symmetry is again studied under what two important things one is okay three important things right three important things one is plane of symmetry that is denoted by sigma next center of inversion which is denoted by i next alternating alternating axis of symmetry alternating axis of symmetry which is denoted by sn 
Now let's come back and learn one after the other <coughs> clearly what is plane of symmetry, center of symmetry and alternating axis of the uh, alternating axis, axis of symmetry.